Hey guys, Chris the Ballet Guy here, here with the Alpha Beast. Now let me figure out how many years ago since I got this Alpha Beast. So I got it back in 2016, December, and it is now February of 2024. So, let's do the math. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 8 years, okay, so I've had my Alpha Beast for 8 years, and, um, I'm probably about to get, like, flamed in the comments for not knowing how to do basic math, uh, just, just keep in mind, uh, my watch isn't on, it's 11.05 p.m., and my sleep schedule is destroyed. Um, let's get this out of the way. This is just a cool um, work shirt that my mom got for me. She works for a uniform company that does uniforms for a bunch of different companies, contracts them out. So, unfortunately, I'm not a cat technician. Um, but And my name is not Chase. But, nevertheless, it's a cool thing to wear. And um, I like it. I'm, I'm not going around claiming to be a cat mechanic, because that'd be stupid. Look at the glasses on, see if these are too smudged up. Alright. Nah. I, I, I haven't had them on for a while today, so it feels weird having them on. So. Um, Alpha Beast. Yes, the Alpha Beast. Uh, I think this is pretty much... One of the, the staple battle songs these days. I mean, what, what's it been around for a decade now? It's, um, I remember when the, before the gen, the third gens and the second gens came out, or the, the pointos or whatever you want to call them. So, it looked real weird when they put the large pivots in this. If, you, if you're with me, the, the pivots, whenever they put them to the larger, I think these are T10 size, from the, like, what, it went from T6 to T8 to T10? I don't remember. Or maybe it was T5, T6 to T10. I don't know. But, um, it, it certainly looked weird to me whenever I saw it, but I was like, hey, it's an Alpha Beast. I'm getting it. So I did. And it's still probably my best flipper. Now, what do I mean by best? Uh, I don't mean it's my favorite, because if I had to pick a favorite, oh, I forgot to grab, grab my Chimera. I'd probably say my 42 is, is my favorite to, um, this is my favorite battle song for one, but it's my favorite one to just pick up and flip, more or less, it just depends on the mood I'm in. I get more satisfaction out of actually flipping this knife, I just don't do as much with it because I'm, I, I what, do they still use the term safe queen anymore, safe queen? It, it's not really a safe queen, but it does kind of live in my safe a lot of the time, and I don't use it as an actual knife. The only damage this thing has sustained so far is like maybe a scratch or two on the handles, and I naturally just had to take the, the perfect tip off the blade. This 42 is in great condition. I need it to last for the next seven generations. So uh, I don't flip it all, a whole bunch, but that's part of why I enjoy it so much because it's like the, the special occasion knife. And it's been a little more than that lately, but um, I like it. This is probably my favorite knife to flip because it's nostalgia. That by all means, though, it's not the best flipper. So, what is the best flipper? Certainly not my 51 or my Chimera. I love my 51. It's one of the, the best battle songs I've ever gotten, personally, I think. Um, yeah, so, my my 51, it's a great flipper. It's probably the one that I flip, have, have flipped the most throughout the entirety of my battle songs. It's taken some abuse, been through a few blades, been through a few, been through a pair of handle scales. It's still one of my all-time favorites, but it's not the best at flipping. It's really light. People say that, oh, it's light. It makes a perfect EDC knife. The weight should not matter. Like, and I bring the, I use this argument all the time. Like, when you're EDCing a knife, everyday carrying, for those who don't know what EDC means, but if you're carrying a knife, you know, pocket clip or not, it's in your pocket, whether it's pocket clip to your pants or not, 
do you want to not feel that thing? Like, I don't get it. Like, why do people like these ultra super light utility knives? Like, are you carrying a backpack that weighs like 150 pounds so much so that the extra two ounces that a knife weighs is gonna keep you from being able to walk? I just don't get it. Like, I know it's mostly a preference thing, but like, I don't get the preference. Like, why would you want your knife to be so light you can't feel it? Like, I, I want to feel the knife in my pocket. I mean, hell, the thing's like $300. I don't want to know. I want to know if it's there just by thinking about it. I don't want to have to go, oh, let me, let me touch my pocket. Oh, yeah, my, my $300 investment's still there. Or for a knife like this, I mean, th this thing is basically irreplaceable at this point besides secondhand market if you can even find one. I haven't seen one of these go for sale in years, but I'm not I'm always looking because I'm too poor to afford a ballast on. Um, hell, I, I spent almost as much on the 42 as I did for this van, but that's not saying a lot for what I spent on the 42. I, I literally spent almost nothing for this vehicle. Now, that's a blessing in, in disguise. Not really in disguise. It's just a blatant blessing. I got this vehicle for what I got it for, but, but yeah, 42, great flipper. Is it the best? No. Is it my favorite? No. Does that mean I don't enjoy it? No, I love it. It's not the best though. And um, my BB ba Barfly bottle openers. I love these. These are my favorite trainers. Get the the other one in frame. I'm not gonna pretend like I know how to uh, do doubles, but um, yeah, I'm I'm very. I, I can play piano and I can play pipe organ, so I'm using my hands and my feet to play, but I, I can't. I can't do these two at the same time, which is tragic. I love my BB Barfly bottle openers. In fact, I compare them to the Alpha Beast in a lot of ways, given how they're balanced and how well they flip. They're very, very good. But, and I've even said that, they might even be better than the Alpha Beast at certain times. And I'd say they're definitely very good. And on some days, they are better than an Alpha Beast to me. They really are. These things are, um, what, what do you call it? invaluable as far as their performance especially for the dollar and if you're comparing it strictly to an alpha beast get one of these over the alpha beast if you value your your money because the alpha beast isn't a whole lot better for the money but on to the main event the alpha beast uh i don't remember how much i paid for this thing or it was a gift but i asked for it and it was it was like credited but i don't remember how much this thing was brand new I want to say it was like three fifty. I I really don't remember. I want to say it was three fifty though. Which these days I don't know how far that gets you, but I don't know if it gets you a full Alpha Beast, especially a brand new one. And I've heard horror stories of the of the thinner Alpha Beasts or the how they've changed. I was apparently I got the last good run of Alpha Beasts or whatever. I know the the premium Alpha Beasts or whatever they're called, the anodized ones with the pocket clips, those fade away. And I hear annoyances about them, nitpicky things, and then the actual construction chains, the Great of Titanium or whatever chains that apparently happened. I don't know a whole lot about, so I'm not really going to make a comment about it. Uh, people people dislike that. So the, the Alpha Beast I have was the first run of the 3.0, and it's I love it. I flipped other Alpha Beasts, like when I went to Blade Show, and some of them didn't feel the same. And some of them were modded, so that's obvious. Like, no, no duh, it's not going to feel the same. It's modded. But, yeah. So, the Alpha Beast, if I remember correctly, is around the 5-ounce mark. That, that's, a, that's a rough guess. Uh, you know me on this channel. I don't talk about actual weights of anything. All I know is that the 42 is 4.2 ounces, <laughs> roughly. But, uh, yeah, so... The Alpha Beast is a little heavier than the 42, so yeah, roughly 5 ounces. I know it's definitely less than 6, because that's like what the 6X, 6X weighs. Isn't that funny? 6X around 6 ounces, 4X around 4 ounces. That's kind of funny, actually. Unless the 6X weighs about 7 ounces, I don't know. Point is, it's it's a good weight. And people like to say, the 40, I'm sorry, the Alpha Beast, it weighs too much. Really, it weighs too much. Like, people like the replicant more, and that's per personal preference. I've flipped a few replicants. I haven't spent enough time with it to really form a valid opinion on it. It's a little bigger, handle-wise, than I'd like. It's not as grippy as I would like. I, I think the G10 and in my head would grip better than the Alpha Beast, but I've only flipped used ones. I've never flipped a brand new one. 
and I've only flipped ones that probably had some modification to them. So, uh, the, the rep is, it's okay. The bare bones, I don't know why everyone craps on the bare bones so bad. I mean, it's, it's not that bad. It's not too thin. It's not too heavy. I mean, these days, no, it doesn't compare. But, like, back in the day when the bare bones came out, there just wasn't a whole lot of competition. So, I mean, there was literally this dude that pissed on a bare bones and uploaded it to YouTube at the time. I don't even remember how long ago this was, but, um... The, the dude, like, just pissed on a bare bones. He was like, <laughs> and it's just like a first person video of him pissing on the alpha, on the, I'm sorry, the, the bare bones. It's like, bro, really? Disrespect to the people at uh, BRS, I guess. They just can't make a good knife given the market, what things cost, you know. Yeah, it, it's kind of too far. Like, you, you can talk about, hey, don't like it, but like, come on, man. I wouldn't disrespect them like that. But the Alpha Beast, has it held up against all the modern stuff? I have no idea because the most modern thing I have is this um, BB Barfly Superfly right here. And um, that's about as modern as it gets for me. I, I haven't been super engaged in the Balasong community for some time now. So it's, it's kind of, not like I've been completely absent, but... I haven't been invested in finding out every little bit of information about every knife like I used to be. I mean, my autism was definitely striding back then. I will not lie. Uh, it's just, you know, life gets in the way. You know, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking like I have a job, but I don't actually. I'd love to have this job. That'd be pretty cool. But I wouldn't be using my CDL. Anyways, back to the point. So I don't really have a whole lot of things to compare the Alpha Beast to as far as modern day goes. But of all the things I've flipped, which isn't terribly a lot, I, I still think the Alpha Beast is still probably my favorite flipper. I've flipped a few EX-10s at Blade Show that I thought were really nice, but I didn't have enough time with them to make a definitive opinion. I, I think my favorite favorite knife that I ever flipped in the moment was probably a Benchman Model 47 because it had the the extra meat at the end of the blade and it just carried really well but yeah this um, what's it called I just went blank so hard just now my Alpha Beast is or the Alpha Beast in general, the, the kind that I have and the older ones as well. I just like them. They're they're my personal favorite flipper. Like, as, as far as, like, the ease and ability to be able to flip a knife, if I was to pick my favorite based on that reason alone, I'd pick the Alpha Beast because the Alpha Beast just does anything you want it to do without a problem. Now, no, you're not doing ricochets at the speed of light with this thing. Um, sounds like a U. I'm kidding. Uh, just, I mean, people, I remember I used to watch Calvin Nation. Now, Calvin Nation, if you know Calvin Nation, God bless your soul. He, one of his complaints about the Alpha Beast, which is a valid one. I mean, he worked in construction. His hands were beaten up all day, every day. He didn't want to come home and flip this super heavy knife when he got home. And the Alpha Beast has come some way. I know on those older models, he was reviewing like a 1.0 or 2.0, but th there was a lot less refined edges to things. So that's that's a fair that's a fair argument. And as far as the weight, I mean, the weight feels worse when you have sharp edges on an object and it's more prone to pinching your fingers. So is it a valid point? Absolutely, but for that model more so than this one. I don't think he'd be favorable of the actual flipping style. I mean, he even said, I think, blatantly that it's just the Alpha Beast is fine. It's just not his cup of tea. It's just not his favorite. I don't remember if he ever got a replicant and reviewed that, but man kind of fell off the face of the world and went into photography and videography. And good on him. He's doing, he's probably also great and good things right now. But I know some of us miss him. Misses Valis on content for sure. He's definitely an icon. This video is becoming everything but the Alpha Beast, like what, seventh or eighth year re review? 
uh, speaking of years, my father set up a server. So now anytime I make a YouTube video, it gets pulled down and it, it gets, um, what's it called? It gets like copied onto a server. So now if my channel gets deleted, I can just re-upload everything or offer like a zip file with all my videos. So congratulations. I wish that that would have happened like 10 years ago, but oh well. <laughs> There's probably someone out there that has, like, one of my videos that people really want to watch. Like, the Squiddy Re-Review. But, yeah. The Alpha Beast, if I was to break down how it flips, it's just a very well-balanced knife. Now, this version with this blade is not my favorite. I like the Alt Blade and the other, uh, what's it called? The Scimitar Blade? I forget. It looks like a beefed-up Bowie Blade a little bit, but... The, the scimitar blade is probably my one of my favorites because it, it really ca encapsulated the whole like idea of the alpha beast which i mean go figure it was the first blade they released it with that was the point but it it carried so well and this one carries very well i'd say with the bowie blade this one it's just a little more neutral and there's nothing wrong with that if i could go back i would I've kept myself from trading my original blade. And I'd still be flipping that right now. But you live and you learn. So, and the reason I traded from my alt blade to this one was because someone really wanted... And the alt blade and the bowie aren't, like, they're very marginally different. You can barely notice. And given the fact that I'm not competitively flipping and trying to enjoy it to the maximum capacity 24-7, like I used to be, I was, I was kind of just like, you know what, it's alright. So I ended up swapping blades with a dude I made a YouTube video with on my old channel, I think, and I reviewed the, the Alpha Beast that he had, which was close to mine, I'd say, for sure. His handles were very nice, but, um, what was I going to say? So yeah, his, his blade had a little more play, so, and that play transferred over to mine. So if you want to look at the play... He didn't like that little amount of play. And my alt blade had literally no play. It like, didn't even like feel like it was flexing back and forth, if I remember correctly. And a little play doesn't bother me. A little tap doesn't bother me. I love tap, actually. Now, I don't like it when it inhibits the ballast, so I'm going to be able to do its functional properties and duties, but... Uh, that's not by all means not too much. I mean, I, I think I think knives are better when they head tap to them personally. I, obviously, that's kind of an exaggeration, but I enjoy the uh, the days when people weren't so focused on tap as much when buying a battle song. It, it's not like a, it's nitpicky or anything, or that it's like annoying, but like I just. Um, I don't know. I just feel like people focus more on the small things that don't really matter. I mean, and, and that's part of evolution. I mean, that's how we develop things to begin with. Like, people were like, I don't like really the way that this thing carries very well. Let me add, like, one th one thousandth of an ounce to the rear of the handles and see if it makes it carry better. Oh, wow, it does. See, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, what's the word? I'm not bashing on the fact that people don't like tap. And the fact that we've evolved out of it, it's just not something I really care about. So that's why I swap blades. But the Alpha Beast, I, I wish I still had the latch too. The latch was a good design. It um, it was a T-latch and it had a tip. It had like a pointed tip to it and the way the handles came together. Every time you'd close the handles, it would pop the latch out of the way. Uh, it would be great if we could just have, you know, spring latches, but... We have a company gatekeeping it, and then no one likes latches anymore, so I guess that's just what it is now. To be fair, the latchless club is probably the best one to be in. I only keep latches on the knives that I don't really flip all the time, which is why my latch is on my 42, because it's iconic. I want to get a T-latch 42 eventually, just so I can take the latch off, because I don't feel bad taking a T-latch off a 42. But a spring latch, that's just too cool. And then... I mean, this one's slightly, slightly less appealing, but hey, 
It's a spring latch. It doesn't get in the way. And this one, I will give it to them. If you look at the difference between the bodies of these two latches, you will see just how much, um, oh my, bruh. Okay, okay, here we go. You will see just how much um, thinner the uh, 51 latch is. And it's, it's not unnecessarily big. So you know what that means? You don't feel it as much when you flip it, which is important on a knife that weighs less than a singular ounce in my head. It doesn't actually weigh that little. Um, the, the reason that the 51 felt heavy to me when I bought, whenever I first got it was because I'd been flipping like Lego bow songs for the entire time and people, and, and this is something I still bring up. People love to exaggerate everything, every single thing. If it can be exaggerated, it, it will be. And part of it's for the better. Part of it's for making sure that people know exactly what they're getting into. But sometimes it just scares people away. Like, um, like with the, 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 the Alpha Beast. People say, oh, this thing's really heavy. It weighs five ounces. It's not that heavy. It's, like, uh, people, I mean, obviously everything is subjective. I mean, I'd be hypocritical if I said that they should just use the weight as a, a means of measure instead of actually saying whether it feels heavy or not. Because feeling heavy is a real thing. Even if it's not actually heavy, it may feel heavy. It has to do with the way it's constructed. Every single bit of the weight minus like one tenth of an ounce could all be in this section of the handle somehow. They could they could have milled this handle out so thin that it was basically a piece of paper and same goes for the blade. And they could have put like brass spacers back there and you would have said, man, this thing feels ridiculous, unbalanced and really heavy. Well, yeah, that's a fair assessment then. But back to my point, people just like to exaggerate things, which isn't a problem at all. It's just exaggerating. So you end up with people like me and a lot of people who whenever they watch these videos of people reviewing knives, they kind of get into something. They're like, this isn't nearly as bad as what they what they said. Or this is completely different from what I was expecting. I expected this thing to weigh like a whole lot more. And for me, I expected the Alpha Beast to weigh more and I expected the 51 to weigh lighter. The 51... The 51 weighed in my hand when I first unboxed it. Like, it... It, it just weighed like it wasn't... Um, it, it just felt like a knife. I mean, it didn't feel, like, ultra light. I mean, it feels really light to me these days because my hands have gotten a lot stronger than when I did back when I was, like... What? I, I was, like, 12 years old. No, I wasn't 12 years old. That was back in 2013, so I was 11 years old. Yeah, I, w I think I was 11 years old. It's always a mental gymnastics trying to remember what it was, but yeah, I think I'll, it was 11. I was 11 years old when I started flipping, and obviously my hands were smaller. I was smaller, so... That's a case of judgment being altered just by the fact that I was literally a child in like 7th grade when I got the 51. So it was back in 2015 when I got the 51 though. So I'd been flipping for two years on plastic Lego battle songs and miscellaneous trainers that sucked. Then I got my Chimera like less than a year after I started I think somehow. But uh, yeah, so... Yeah, so, the Alpha Beast. Is this really a review? I don't know. I don't really know if it would be considered a review. But, I love the Alpha Beast. It will always be near and dear to my heart, and I've been missing out on making these yearly videos, because I used to make a video every year about the Alpha Beast, and how it's still great. I mean, the Alpha Beast, I mean, keep in mind, this thing is eating concrete a lot. Not its whole life. But, BRS... I don't know about these days because I haven't kept up with them. But these uh, back in the day when they made this, they made a solid Alpha Beast. I love this this knife so much. If if this knife like just disappeared one day or I lost it, which I've lost it a few times and thankfully found it, but like if I lost my Alpha Beast forever, I would be devastated. I'd be because this thing just like has memories. 
Like, I competed in Blade Show 2017 with this. I, I competed against Faulty Fly. I met Knife Zoid and, and showed him my Alpha Beast and Phoenix Fire and all those people. Like, and th those memories are, are still somewhat in my head, even though they were so long ago, because it was, it was such a cool day to me, because I got to meet so many of the people I watched on YouTube. And my Alpha Beast was there with me when I did it, and it was in the sheath I have right here. And you know where it was? It was around my neck. It was around my neck during Blade Show. And that's a memory I hopefully will get to relive one day. And I'm sure Blade Show's probably changed a lot since then. It'll never be exactly the same. But... There, there's there's nothing quite like the memories of me whipping out my Alpha Beast and being like, oh, you want to see my Alpha Beast? People will be like, hey, is that an Alpha Beast? And I'd be like, yeah, you want to see it? And then I'd be like, hey, is that like a replicant? And they'd be like, yeah. And I'm like, can I see a replicant? And they're like, yeah, can I see your Alpha Beast? Sure. And then we just flip each other's knives and we're like, oh man, I've never flipped one of these before. This is really cool. And my Alpha Beast was that for a good few people. It was really cool. The first booth I went to was the Benchmade booth. And that was the first day. We got there really late on the first day. And the first knife I flipped at uh, Blade Show was the 87, I think. And I still want an 87. I don't care what people say. It's it's not a bad knife. It, it's not the... I mean, objectively, from like a repairability standpoint, the sheep foot's blade is kind of bad taste. But Or uh, I forget what it's called. But not the sheep's foot. What is it? Warren Cliff, I think. Warren Cliff blade. It's just a, it's literally a razor blade. I mean, what what do you want? S I think it was like S thirty five VN or something or S thirty V or something. And say what you will, if that tip gets chipped, you're you're kind of you're reprofiling that blade. But at the end of the day, I love my Alpha Beast. It's one of my favorite knives. It's one of my favorite knives of all time. I'll say that. In fact, I think my, um, if we get all the 4X knives out of the way in the orders that they'd be in, my favorite ballad song is the 42, and my favorite knife, personally to me, that I have the most experience with, my favorite flipper is the Alpha Beast. So, yeah. Oh, I actually opened them both at once for once. <laughs> so, yeah. I I don't know what I'd be doing without my Alpha Beast personally, because I mean honestly, when this when life gets stressful, sometimes sometimes you just gotta sit down and flip a ballad song, and sometimes the Alpha Beast is my first choice. That's all I'm saying, because I don't gotta care dropping my Alpha Beast on concrete like I do my 42 or my 51. I mean I've done it, I've dropped this thing on concrete a lot, but not in the same aggressive way that my Alpha Beast has. I mean, hell, this thing's been missing two screws for like the past, like, what, five years, I think? I've yet to replace it. It's still holding up just fine. Excuse me, I burped. Maybe if I replace those screws, it'll fix the balancing. I got the hiccups. The balancing that I was mentioning. Anyways, this is my however many years dial song review of the BRS Alpha Beast. One of my all-time favorites, near and dear to my heart. And one more thing before I go. Dial song flipping isn't just a hobby. It's an experience that will maybe take you to meet new people. It's something that you'll be able to focus on when times get difficult. And it's something that will allow you to Maybe you meet people that you would have never met before and make friendships you never would have expected to make and influence people to make decisions they never would have made before. So, yeah. With that being said, battle song flipping isn't just a hobby. It's an art. And it may not be technically a sport because it's based on subject subjectiveness, just like marching band. It's judged on a subjective basis. But... It's still an experience worth having. So, with that being said, thank you for watching. This is Chris the Valley Guy.
Thank you for watching and goodbye.